Hello and welcome. My name is Rupert Gunter and I'm a composer and concert violinist and teacher. And we're here today because I've got a concert coming up on Sunday, which is called Ancient Messengers. And this is a concert which looks at the history of the planet, really, from a, as much from a museum point of view, scientific point of view, as from an artistic one. And this is what I love about the, the arts, is that a scientist can go and investigate a topic, a, a ge geographic formation, or a period of history, or a period of, of, of tectonic change on the planet, and they can write it all down and record all the data. And a musician or a painter can study exactly the same things and give just as accurate a report on it or portrayal of it as the scientist. But we do it through feeling. We do it through what it feels like to be there, what it feels like to be in those times or in those um, geographic situations. So my job as a composer is to put together the music that complements and conveys that feeling and that experience of what it was like to be there. Otherwise you can just read it in a, in a booklet. It can tell you all the facts. And so I'm taking everything we see, whether it's the geographic formation of the planet, uh, the changes that have happened on it, the relics of all of that is what we have now. So the, the mountains, the oceans, the valleys, the plains, the rock formations, the fossils, the dinosaur bones from 60 million years ago, right through to fossilized vegetation, petrified trees, etc. Coming back further, we have documented evidence, we have hard evidence of human hands shaping tools, shaping rock tools made out of obsidian rock, 1.2 million years ago. That takes us back a lot further than what we thought, which were the cave paintings from about 35, 40,000 years ago. So, how do we convey that? Well, I can narrate which I do, I will be narrating part of the concert, but I'll also be sharing through music. So let's take the beginning of the planet. The planet started taking form four and a half billion years ago approximately. So what I want to do is also convey that amount of time. So much of the old music which I played and love uh, won't cut it for this concert. So those kind of tonalities we hear in a lot of classical music. I think they're telling a different story. To me, there's a much more um, primal and much less, uh, much less refined story to tell here. So first of all, time. We're looking at stretches of time which are unimaginable, actually, to the human mind. We think of a long time as 80 years or 100 years, sometimes half an hour if we're waiting for someone. It can seem like a long time. We're talking about four and a half billion years. So what I'm doing in the concert, I'm representing this in ways which give you a kind of contemplative experience, because that's the nearest we have of that kind of continuity in time. So I'm using more fragments of, of notes and melodies rather than constructing big melodies that you could hum along with. So I'm using um, small motifs like this.
conveys something, that repetitious nature of it, with only a couple of notes, conveys something much more accurate, I think, to contemplating expanses of time you know, approaching four and a half billion years than what I demonstrated before. To me that's something more um, of a particular period in human history, not just because that's what the music is from, but it has all these resolutions, everything's neatly packed away, and in nature we don't have that. We have, it's far less predictable, it's far more, we don't know where it's going to end up. So that's the first thing is the, the expanse of time and how an artist, what an artist has at their disposal, what means to convey that, and then the personal choices of how, how we like to do that. The other thing that I like to do with conveying um, change over time, so that's another thing, so we've got time, but we've got change over time, this is evolution. We have biological evolution, which everyone's familiar with, because I've read about it at school and at university, but what about the evolution of the planet? The changes that it's been through, because the planet as we know it now, is nothing like what it's been. tend to discount that. We tend to think that the planet, the way it looks with Australia and Africa and Europe and America and South America and the North Pole and the South Pole and all the oceans and all the weather patterns, that this is how it's always been. We know from science it's not. But to really go there, we have to look at massive changes. For a start, we've had an, in, an atmospheric change from, we know, at least carbon-based, carbon dioxide-based, carbon dioxide based atmosphere in the early in the early times of the planet gradually changed into an oxygen based system which we're part of and we evolved as organisms and everything we see here to live in an oxygen based system so now we're talking about events in time and something like that, again, to look at very vast things, I like to have more abstract ways of, uh, of representing that. So I'll be looking at, instead of having... I'll be using much more abstract, less trackable um, ways of playing music. So it's much harder for you to pin it down and feel comfortably that it starts here and it finishes there. with the quality of sounds rather than notes like on a piano dong 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 that's gone from this just like our concept of time and space in this picture it can't work we can't measure time with the notes on the piano in that way with our minds in the same way any questions here we go on okay
So the next thing is that the Earth's surface has changed so much over these four and a half billion years. For a start, it was hot rock and gases, and as it all came together and cooled and started to take more solid form, and then that cooled further, it cracked and broke and moved and jostled for new arrangements like a rock pile. You can't just move one rock in a rock pile. Everything moves to accommodate that. And so it is with all the aspects of the Earth's makeup, including the atmosphere. So what we've got is a history where what was once oceans is now mountain ranges. And we know that because there's shells and fossils of uh, oceanic um, organisms high up in mountain, mountain ranges. What was once mountains becomes seafloor. What was once horizontal becomes vertical. There's a section of, of um, geology in the, in the Nullarbor Plain, I'm told by a geologist friend of mine who spent years out there, that was laid down, layers of rock, laid down sedimentary and various other formations, and then the whole thing through tectonic activity was tipped 90 degrees. It's like a boat that ended up just going down on its nose and sinking. So what we have, and this is part of the attraction for the mining industry apparently, which he was part of, suddenly you've got access to all these strata that were once laid down, and to get to the bottom you had to drill down and drill down impossible depths. It's tipped up on its end, the whole thing's exposed. All you have to do is move east and west, and you've got access to all those different geological makeups. So there's that sort of thing. So the face of the Earth has changed so much in these billions of years. In fact, in the last millions of years, it's gone through massive changes and become unrecognisable. And all the rest has been done by water. All the rest has been done by water. So how, how on earth do I represent something like this? Again, with my background in music, which is a dramatic art in many ways, you could say. All, all art is a dramatic art in that it, it tells stories and uses drama to convey um, its premises and, and conclusions. I use a lot of dissonance and consonance, so I'll be starting off with something dramatic things that we can do in music to represent those times of turmoil, but also where we have um, change, but not necessarily um, frightening change, you might say. So there's the, the way that water has shaped the landscape, because after, after all the tectonic stuff, pretty much all the rest is water. Water's gone to work, works with gravity, flows down slopes. So. And the narration, of course, helps with this because I can give people something to hang on to throughout the 75-minute performance. So there'll be five minutes here and there where it's music and narration, music and narration the whole way through. And we'll also have the 
benefit of a six meter screen behind me which has a whole lot of images of whatever uh, um, relics of this story that we're telling through time from early very 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 early fossil forms from the previous carbon system right through a carbon dioxide system right through to things like fossilized dinosaur bones got rock formations and then we've got the, the human history again all of these things I'm using them as messengers because they're bringing us a message but the fascinating thing and this is where we move into the psychology of the concert as well not just the sort of scientific facts geology bit is that with with the relics that we have with these messengers they are all of their time. They weren't messengers for us. They were not like a text message I can send to you or you or you and say, this is, I want to say something to you. These are messengers from those times. They were created in those times. And our ability to really comprehend and to be able to participate in what those messengers are really bringing to us is not necessarily um, completely successful because we don't know we don't really know what it was like we can um, put forth conjecture of what it was like and we can say well we can prove these aspects and these aspects from scientific data but we actually don't we don't know and so there's that that whole that whole aspect in the geological history of the world right through to the recent ice age somewhere around 25 to 12,000 years ago there's longer ones there have been many ice ages but the most recent one we're taking artistic liberties to portray any of this but the point is that I'm hoping to give people a, a sense of time outside of their normal time and to look at the frailties of the conclusions that we're used to drawing. For instance, that the world looks like this. The fact is, there's been 90 extinction events in the last four and a half billion years, at least. 90 complete extinction events where everything reset the clock, start evolution again, microbes, all these sort of things, life forms, forestation, all these different aspects of life on the earth, the, the um, the vegetation, the, the animal species, the microbes, the, the weather patterns, everything changed. And that was through um, temperature changes and impacts from meteors. Uh, it was through just phases that the Earth was going through in its journey anyway. But once we start to hit the human history, which we now can say started about a million years ago, again, the sort of relics that we have from then, we have cave paintings from the, during the Ice Age. 35, 40,000 years ago. The earliest musical instrument uh, at the moment, um, apart from the earliest musicians, which are the birds, which go back millions of years. The first musical instrument put to human use was the bone of a vulture. It was a wing bone of a vulture, one of the longer bones, only about uh, 20, 22 centimetres long, that it had five holes drilled in it. And that dates from um, I think it's from the Neanderthal, the Neander Valley in, um, in Germany, I'll have to check that. But it's definitely from Germany 35,000 years ago. That's what we know. And so when they found that relic, when they found that, when they found that little messenger, that flute, that flute was a messenger of that time. But we don't really know the context of those people's lives. We don't even know necessarily how they played that flute. But we know because it's got five notes on it that it was probably, and they're tuned somewhat like this, what we call a pentatonic scale in music. So 
would have had the capability of that and not much else. So the entire musical experience say that they had the capability to play those notes. We don't know. They might have just gone... We don't know what they did. But we do know they had the capability to play that more extended way of making music. So that's the first sign of um, human hand making music. We don't know what was happening with their voices. I'm sure people used their voices very creatively way before that, but we don't have any records. So what I'm trying to get across is that there have been all these changes, 90 extinction events, massive upheavals where land has become sea, sea has become land. These changes are really quite dramatic and there's no reason why they've stopped. They haven't stopped. We're just living in a little pause and we don't know what's to come. And I think what's so, what I love about this is that it breaks down our idea of what we know, but also what time is, but also what our mortality is, and how how that affects, how that drives our assumptions that we cling to about surety, the, the quest for surety. How many times do people in their life wonder about maybe when all the earth surface is going to turn upside down again or the oceans are going to become land and the land's going to become oceans. Not very often, not very seriously. But it is very much on the cards that all that will continue. And the other thing is that we've localised our own human experience of 70, 80, 90, 100 years, hopefully, something like that. That's what we consider time in. We don't even consider the millions and millions and millions and millions of years over which all these changes happen. So for me, this is just as much a fascinating part and the, I will affect this much more through the narration, take you on a journey on the day, um, which hopefully gives people a chance just to drop all of those things that they're hanging on to about how life is and what time is and what our sense of continuity is made of. in a day, seven days in a week, months, maybe a few years ahead or behind, how does a mind habituated to that landscape deal with something that has no beginning and no end? How does it even beginning, how does it begin to deal with hundreds of thousands of years? How does it begin to deal with the end of human life for maybe a few million years and then an all species and then it all regenerating in some new form? where jellyfish might be the, the most evolved species, which they certainly have been in the past, and given human behaviour. Jelly, jellyfish do not ruin their environment to the point that they can no longer survive in it. So it makes you think. So that's the gist of things. Oh, yeah.